Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. The video camera is running. Oh my god! Family one emergency? Give me an ambulance out here! What you're about to see in the next 60 minutes is real. Real cops. Real crooks. Real cases. Everything from state-of-the-art training to terrifying shootouts. The most reckless criminals, the most bizarre and unusual crimes ever captured on tape. From high-speed chases to robbery in progress, from impossible rescues to insane crimes of passion. We've gathered this amazing video from departments all over the world. Much of it has never been seen outside the law enforcement community. What you see may shock you, frighten you, anger you. But we bring it to you for one reason. Because knowledge is power. A power that could save your life. Sheriff John Bennell. At this very moment, police officers everywhere are engaged in a fierce war on crime. Now they want you to see what they're doing to win that battle. In the next hour, you're going to be riding shotgun with the world's finest. So hang on. You're in for the ride of your life. Amarillo, Texas. You're looking at a car that's going the wrong way on the freeway. A white tour, eastbound and westbound lane. It's driven by an 82-year-old man, a man who suffers from Alzheimer's disease. Going at a high rate of speed. This isn't a pursuit. It's a race against the inevitable. We're coming up on Green and the still not stopping. The driver knows something is wrong, so he tries to pull over to the left. The traffic coming straight at him is too fast and furious. He puts on his right blinker and veers toward the center divider. But there's no place to go there either. Frightened and confused, the old man continues his headlong race into unsuspecting traffic. He approaches a blind hill, and two cars barely avoid a pilot. We're gonna have a collision. We can't get somebody east of us. In the distance, another officer races to head off the wrong way via. Hoping to slow the driver down, this officer risks a head-on collision, but the old man never even hits the brakes. All he knows is that it's one more car to avoid. Down the road, police are already rushing to block off traffic and set up a roadblock. Pursuing officers coordinate their positions. They only have seconds to set up the roadblock. But the elderly driver will never get there. It's a terrifying collision. Here's what happens. A minivan with children inside can't get out of the way fast enough. The white car rebounds off the center divider and sideswipes a sport utility vehicle. Police rush to check on the occupants of the minivan. Miraculously, the children are uninjured. The driver is shaken, but walks away without a scratch. The driver of the sport utility vehicle is also unhurt. And thankfully, the old man escapes his brush with death. Within minutes, an ambulance and fire truck are on the scene. He's taken to a hospital for examination and a short time later is reunited with his family. With this potential for disaster, it's truly amazing that no one got hurt. Every driver in every vehicle who looked up in terror at the car coming toward them head on. All the officers who risked their lives to save a frightened Alzheimer's victim. And finally, the old man himself. All were fortunate beyond belief to have come out of this ordeal alive. 
Drunks and addicts will do anything to feed their habit. But when they take that desperation on the road, everyone's in danger. In Houston, Texas, police face a big problem. A bus driver has gone off his route and is now on a desperate search for crack cocaine. I want to go to Waco and pick up a couple rocks. Spike strips have blown out a tire, but he's not stopping. Even as the bus carves out a sparking trail on the highway, the driver tries to bargain with the police over the radio. Is there any way to bargain myself that we can go to Waco? It's as if the man doesn't notice the convoy of cruisers behind him. After two hours of driving without tires, the bus grinds to a halt. Now the police prepare for the worst. But the driver surprises everyone by surrendering. In Phoenix, Arizona, a heroin addict in jail proves how far he's willing to go for a fix. Suffering from intense drug withdrawal, the junkie escaped from prison by driving a stolen pickup truck through this fence. And within minutes, he's already scored. Unbelievably, he shoots up as he's being pursued. Steering with one hand, he injects himself with the other. Although spike strips have shredded his tires, he won't stop until he's good and ready. But now that he's had his fix, he's ready. He doesn't even struggle as officers prepare him to go back to prison. These men use their vehicles to run from the law and drugs to escape reality. But both caught up to them because being buzzed behind the wheel is the surest way to end up busted and behind bars. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos. Armed and dangerous. Full contact action. A trash talking drunk. A real terrorizer here. Lashes out at a cop. A cruiser bruising teen. Smashes to a stop. And a car crunching felon. Trashes everything in sight. If it shatters, batters, rams or slam you'll see it next you are under arrest crooks never know when to quit they push it too far they push it too hard these are my hands they push their luck but when push comes to shove you are under arrest someone has to push back Bucksport, Maine. A man is pulled over on suspicion of drunk driving. Officer Kevin Menu asked for his license. Officer Menu does know him. He's arrested him for DUI before. Step out of the vehicle for me, please. As soon as the man steps out, the officer can tell he's had more than a few beers. He asks him to do a sobriety test. Can you just let me go home and get some sleep? I'm not gonna kill anybody. That's what they all say, until it actually happens. But you have been drinking again. You shouldn't be drinking and driving. The man agrees to do the tests, but he's not happy about it. I want you to tip your head back with your eyes closed. I think this is a little bit ridiculous. But... I'm not asking you if it's ridiculous. Officer Menu knows he can't give a guy like this an inch. Not even when he tries a sob story. I'm already in enough trouble with the first one. I'm gonna lose my license. I'll probably lose my job. You know, then what am I gonna do? Go on welfare? And... No, your problem is that you are now under arrest again for operating under the influence of intoxicating liquor. Again. Now the suspect becomes belligerent. Put your hands on top of the car. Now. There, see? These are my hands. Put your hand on the car. When the man threatens assault, Officer Menu is forced to use pepper spray. Calm down. You are under arrest. Yeah, I realize that. Now it is assault. After two blasts of spray, he still won't give up. Officer Menu has to get physical. If the man grabs his pistol, things will go from bad to worse in a hurry. 
Soon, the man is overpowered. But he still makes demands. He wants his glasses, which have fallen to the ground in the struggle. Put your hands on top of the car. Get my glasses. I'll get them for you as soon as I can. I don't believe you. I don't Just do you. what I told you to do. Backup arrives. Peg, you're going to go with us, OK? Well, you swung at me. You're going to go you with us. I know right that. Now. I want my glasses. Turn Put your hands. It takes both officers to pin this man to the ground. And he's still being infantile. Oh, you got a real terrorizer here. He continues to squirm. Ow, ow, ow. But they put the cuffs on him at last. For his multiple DUI offenses, the man is sentenced to four months in jail. Would you please sit down in the car? I want my glasses. I'm sit sure down in the car. car. Right now. This drunk driver it's acted like a spoiled child. But no matter how much he kicked his feet, Back. screamed, oh, you got a real terrorizer here. and carried on, nothing Back. was going to keep Officer Menu from taking him in for the second time. Driver, step out of the car with your arms in the air. Taking and maintaining control of a situation is part of wearing the badge. But sometimes a suspect does something so outrageous and so unexpected that even the most experienced officers can't believe their eyes. Grand Rapids, Michigan, 2.20 a.m. A motorist is weaving and driving with only parking lights on. Suspecting a DUI, state troopers pull the car over. Officers find a teenage girl behind the wheel, reeking of alcohol. It's no surprise when she fails a sobriety test. The real surprise comes from her age. How old you say you were now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not only is she under the influence, she's under the drinking age. And now, she's under arrest. <laughs> the girl immediately breaks down as the trooper places her in the back of his unit. He locks the door, leaving her alone inside the cruiser. It's a decision he'll soon regret. What happens next is one of the most incredible events ever caught on police video. What you're hearing is the girl sliding her cuffed hands out from behind her. She climbs into the front seat, starts the engine, and before troopers can react, she's off into the night in a stolen cruiser. Weaving through the streets, she sobs hysterically. The camera in the car picks up her every word as she continues her crazed getaway. Officers close in almost immediately. A state trooper tries to cut her off, but she barrels around him and roars away. She turns onto a freeway on-ramp just as officers catch up. They try and ram her onto the shoulder, but she accelerates out of reach, getting more frantic by the second. On the freeway, she pushes the high-performance cruiser to 80. State police join the pursuit and try to box her in, but when she refuses to stop, police have no choice. Troopers force the hijack unit up onto the center divider, as the car grinds to a stop, officers run toward the cruiser. What happens next is staggering. She suddenly throws the powerful V8 engine into reverse. She slams it back into drive and floors the gas pedal. Officers seem to have her pinned, but again she throws the cruiser into reverse. As she bulldozes backwards, troopers open fire, shooting out her tires. The car leaps forward again and plows through surrounding units. Only split-second reflexes save this woman's life. The drunken teen once again makes a break towards freedom, but her now flattened tires can't hold the road. Troopers spin her out and then swarm the wreck. They yank her from the vehicle and take her into custody. They got the one in custody. Oh, God, This drunken teenage girl did the unthinkable. Her brazen theft of a police cruiser showed a callous disrespect for the law. 
Her attempt to run down officers showed a ruthless disregard for anyone's life but her own. And while her actions didn't claim any innocent lives, her alcoholic road trip threatened everyone and forced Michigan State troopers to take risks above and beyond the call of duty to shut her down. Next, on World's Wildest Police Video, heart-stopping action. Off-roading teens go off the deep end. A state college is in a state of shock. And a highway conversation oh, you got something in there. becomes a highway confrontation. Come back up now. It's hot running, stop. engine gunning, ah. mind stunning danger. Next. Shots fired. He was armed and dangerous. In a perfect world, what I did was write your warning ticket. People would get along, the roads would be safe and kids would behave. Unfortunately, this is not a perfect world. When a suspect pushes his vehicle to the extreme, he'll often run his car right into the ground. But what happens when his car is designed for extremes? Sterling Heights, Michigan. When an officer clocks a truck at 107 miles per hour, he wastes no time trying to stop it. The sport utility vehicle heads to the shoulder. But what the officer doesn't know is that it's stolen. The teenage occupants have just hotwired it right off a local car lot. Realizing that they're about to go down, the kids rethink their options. The 17-year-old driver floors it. He decides to test the limits of his rugged new vehicle. Now he just moves it. He jumps a curb and escapes into a parking lot. As the pursuit continues into the city, units from two other departments join the chase. The suspects dodge patrol cars by constantly changing direction. But as one officer tries to block the suspect, the kid reacts by taking an insane chance, nearly plowing into a patrol car. It's time to fight fire with fire the police send in their own SUV. The kids panic. The driver makes a desperate turn into a parking lot and almost rolls his truck. Watching a lot here. But near catastrophe doesn't stop this kid. He races through the parking lot, ignoring any obstacle that stands in his way. And amazingly, the suspects make it through. Down the road, Police try to stop the truck by laying down a spike strip, but they're too late. An SUV races past them. Minutes later, the suspects make a last minute detour into another parking lot. Police follow, plowing over curves and blazing new trails through the grass. Finally, police catch up to the suspects and box them in. But before officers can make their next move, the driver somehow slips from their grasp and darts right. Police stay hot on the suspect's tail, and in a last ditch effort to escape, the teenagers hop another curb and go off-roading. As the suspect tears across a high school soccer field, police see an opportunity to end the chase. They go for it. Oh my God. Ramming the suspect but the suspect's truck gets hooked on the bumper of the officer's vehicle. They're now stuck together. And try as they might, the suspects aren't getting away from the officers now. Knowing that it's over, the kids finally give up. The driver is charged with six counts, including fleeing, assault with a deadly weapon, and destruction of police property. When police engage in high-speed pursuits, they have to be ready for anything. Uh, he's just losing it. These kids were equipped with a powerful sport utility vehicle which skidded, jumped, and bounced away from pursuing officers. But when police brought in a truck of equal power, the suspects went from locking horns with the police to locking bumpers with a police vehicle. Now these junior joyriders are both facing lockup in a juvenile facility.
Houston County, Georgia. Dark blue and color Barracuda. 247 connector at the Peach Street crossing. Deputy Sheriff Joe Sindek pulls a driver over for not wearing his seatbelt. How are you doing tonight? Pretty good. Was I doing something wrong? Yes, sir. I didn't see your seatbelt on when you come through the light there. Um, it's a minor offense, and the man has a clean record. What I did was write your warning ticket, like I told you. It don't cost you nothing. Oh, okay. It don't go the man is free to go, but he engages the deputy in a rambling conversation about his car. It's worth, uh, it's worth damn uh, about 12000 as is. Is it right? Yeah. Um, but, uh, see, I got things in there, two separate units. You got the one that's come out of the floor, mm -hmm. and you got the one over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't got the stuff that goes on the inside of the belt. Yeah. Okay. Deputy Sindak may seem casual, but he's hard at work. It's hard to find parts for it. I guess so. so he notices the slurred speech and rambling thoughts. Let me ask you something here before you go on. And okay. of course, I'm certainly not accusing you of being part of this activity if you're not, okay? But do you mind if I search you real quick for contraband? The man agrees, but he nervously drops things everywhere. Drop the key again, drop the quarter. Moments later, what is this in here? the deputy finds what the man is hiding. Oh, you got something in there. Pull it out. It's something all right. Five ounces of crystal methamphetamine, a powerful and illegal stimulant. Crystal meth is known to make the user insanely violent. Don't, don't argue with me, don't fight with me, okay? A cooperative suspect can turn vicious in a second. Lashing out at the officer, the suspect breaks free and runs. But he won't escape so easily. Deputy Sindek has him in cuffs within moments. The man collapses, and the deputy takes him in. Roswell, Georgia. A reckless joyrider speeds through this quiet neighborhood. Minutes later, an angry homeowner videotapes the damage. This is the damage done by a early model Z. The skid marks tell the whole story. The car was driving too fast to avoid careening onto the property. These are the streaks of him sliding into the bushes. It has been reported to the police. Police arrive to take a report. As the family continues to videotape, they capture something incredible. There he is. Unbelievably, the suspect is spotted on the next street. Police take off in hot pursuit. But the homeowner knows how fast the suspect's car can go. There's no way the cop that car. Moments later, the Nissan rounds the corner. Look out, look out. Amazingly, the homeowner captures the heart-stopping action as the car loses control. It rolls over and over, finally resting in a heap of twisted metal. Seconds later, police pull up to the smoking wreckage, and a family member rushes to help. What police find is startling. The suspect is a drunken 16-year-old kid with hardly a scratch on him. This homeowner turned on his video camera, expecting to record the results of reckless driving. This is the damage done by early model Z. But he never expected that lightning would strike twice. There he is. And that this time, he'd be there to capture it all. Still to come on world's wildest police video. Cops versus criminals, head to head. Rioters on campus go toe to toe with police. Hand to hand combat with roadside brawlers. It's wall to wall action. Next. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. The unpredictable, the unimaginable, the unbelievable. Faced with this kind of madness, the only thing an officer can trust... That's got to get him out of there. ...is instinct. <laughs> Some people think they're above the law because of who they are or who they know. They're wrong, and they only realize it when it's too late. 
in Sargent County, North Dakota, sheriff's deputies began following this car because of a missing plate. But when the driver pushes speeds over 100 miles an hour, this becomes a chase. Suddenly, the suspect cuts his speed in half and takes a hard left. He then stops without warning. This deputy is about to learn what kind of maniac he's been chasing. After calling in backup, the deputy draws his weapon and approaches the car. Get out of the vehicle right now! What he finds is shocking. The suspect is the 18-year-old son of a local police officer, and he's holding a sawed-off rifle to his own head. The deputy backs off. He's had to deal with this young man before, but this time the kid's clearly over the edge. Suddenly, the armed suspect roars away in a cloud of dust. Backup arrives and the chase resumes. But the suspect pushes the car too hard. His engine blows. The sedan is disabled and stuck in a ditch, but the danger is still very real. The deputies persuade the man to step out of the car. He raises his shirt to show he's now unarmed, but the deputies are still cautious. This suspect may be related to a fellow cop, but he gets no special treatment here. The deputies take him down and slap on the cuffs. It's over. The young man was convicted of weapons charges and fleeing a crime scene. The consequences, two years in jail. Because when it comes to the law, it's not about who you know, it's about what you did. In some countries, students protest for political reform or against human rights abuses. Why are these American students rioting? They want easier access to beer and liquor. Illinois State University. The city council has ordered bars to close early Halloween Eve. In response, angry and drunk students defiantly gather in the streets. At first, they only want to party and dance. Their partying turns ugly when they overturn a parked car. Across the country at Penn State University, students protest against the university's new dry campus policy. But there's nothing peaceful about this protest. They trash their campus, setting fires, and destroying everything in sight. Next, they pull down a small light post, but it's not enough. They look for something bigger. They find an even larger light post, but this one weighs hundreds of pounds and has thousands of volts running through it. It comes crashing down, right in the middle of their drunken party. Luckily, no one is injured. At Washington State, students flock to the streets to protest their school's new anti-drinking regulations. One reason why this happened right here. This year, Wazoo went dry. The students rally around a huge bonfire in the middle of the road. What are we doing? No. We're having a good time. Minutes later, riot police are on the scene. Some rioters claim to have been inspired by another more violent riot. University of Colorado, this happened, I don't know, a couple years ago. University of Colorado. Angry students turned the campus into a war zone as police battled one of the worst riots in state history. Some students come to college to get an education, some to party. But when they get out of hand, the riot police have no choice but to give these students an education in law enforcement. This is how they party then? I think we've got a real problem here. Red Bank, Tennessee. Officer Mike Haynes is in pursuit of a teenager who refused to stop for speeding. The desperate teen does all he can to shake Officer Haynes, racing his four-wheel drive down rain slick back roads with suicidal recklessness. I run about 100 southbound. But at every turn, he still finds the seasoned veteran right in his rear view mirror. It appears that the teenager is calling it quits. Until he does this. Taking full advantage of his four wheel drive, the suspect barrels down what used to be a dirt road. Right now it's a mud road, and that could mean trouble for Officer Haynes. 
suspect cuts through the rugged terrain with speed and agility. But Officer Haynes manages to keep his eye on the taillights and stay in pursuit. The road is quickly replaced with heavy undergrowth. Traction is practically impossible. The suspect's taillights grow more distant, disappearing altogether just moments later. Now Haynes is practically driving blind. Suddenly, the path clears, and he discovers the truck nose down in a creek bottom. He's cracked, he's wrecked. The teenage suspect isn't going anywhere. He's pinned behind the wheel, unable to reach a gun he has stashed on the floor. Officer Haynes realizes how easily this pursuit could have turned into a shootout. This renegade teenager thought his souped-up blazer had the edge on a police cruiser. But what he didn't count on was the determination of Officer Mike Haynes, who was willing to travel on-road and off-road to put this pistol-packing, weed-wacky pump behind bars. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Video. These are 80 miles per hour. Criminals go too far. A stubborn let suspect me, let me go. goes over the line. A stolen sports car goes over the curb. And a bad boy booze hound possibly suicidal goes over the edge. It's over the top danger. And nothing is under control. Next. Suspects. Some are liars. They my birthday wrong. Some are runners. And some are fighters. He is armed. But to police officers, they all look dangerous. Stop. Los Angeles. Well, what we know so far is that this is a burglary suspect. He is being pursued southbound on the 110 freeway. What started out as a simple burglary call has exploded into a high-speed pursuit onto the busiest freeway system in the world. This guy's doing at least 90 miles an hour. While TV news and LAPD choppers keep the suspect in their sights, they spot the man taking swigs from a bottle of vodka. Unbelievable. It looks like he's drinking alcohol as the police chase him. He drunkenly straddles the freeway lanes, hitting triple-digit speeds cutting perilously close to school buses and big rigs. He suddenly exits the freeway. Uh, this is real dangerous. He's cutting into downtown traffic. Busy downtown streets should slow him down, but they don't. Stop signs and blind intersections mean nothing. Here he narrowly avoids an innocent driver. Officers try to shut down the streets ahead of the chase. But they can't be everywhere at once. A glancing blow sends this unlucky driver spinning. Unfazed, the suspect barrels on. Another crowded intersection blocks the road. But he dives into cross traffic, barrels through on the wrong side, cuts across the center median, and rockets away. The wild pursuit enters a quiet neighborhood. Ground units have him cornered. Police helicopters have him pinned, right next to a cliff with a 100-foot sheer drop. We've got 15 black and whites following this suspect right now. Copy that, 17. All secondary units get room. Primary units will respond. Suddenly, the suspect does the unthinkable. Well, he just, oh my god. That is unbelievable. The unstable man makes a suicidal run for the cliff. the heavy-duty guardrail stops him short. Police quickly surround him. He exits his car armed with a handgun. The suspect has a gun. He's pointing it right at the police. Amazingly, they hold their fire and take cover. The suspect is armed and dangerous. The suspect immediately turns the gun on himself and orders police to back off. Police plead with the man to surrender. But he refuses. He, he seems to have some sort of death wish, and the police want to make sure that he doesn't hurt himself. Within minutes, a SWAT team deploys. They spread out and surround the suspect. Snipers take up positions on the surrounding rooftops. Right there on the roof, 
Those are SWAT sharpshooters. A strike team gets ready to move. When they get the green light, the five-man squad advances on the suspect. One officer steps out and fires off multiple rounds of tear gas. Oh, man, that has got to get him out of there. It quickly fills the car. The suspect opens the door to vent out the choking tear gas. Oh, we just don't know how he could stand it in there. SWAT officers move in for a second strike. This time, they fire a volley of rubber bullets at the suspect. Another officer launches more rounds of tear gas from inside the truck. Now he's got to get out of that car right now. Even with the doors open, it's got to be absolutely unbearable. Police keep the suspect in their sights as they wait for the tear gas to take effect. The SWAT team is in position. They've got a clear shot just in case the suspect gets out and decides to rush the police with a weapon. Helicopters spot the suspect moving around, but he still isn't surrendering. Uh, police are being extremely patient. They want to give him a chance to surrender, but so far, it's just not happening. Officers prepare to go in one last time. Using the police unit as a moving shield, they advance. Fearing the suspect might attack at any second, the officers strike first. Using another barrage of rubber bullets, officers storm the barricaded driver before he can react. They've got him. They've got the suspect. They're taking him out of the car. They drag out the stunned suspect and take him into custody. Code four, the suspect is in custody. It's finally over. When this dangerous chase became a cliffside standoff, the resources of an entire police department were mobilized. When it was clear the negotiations wouldn't work, the suspect is armed and dangerous. These men and women took swift and decisive action. They're firing tear gas into the vehicle. Behind the cover of tear gas and volleys of rubber bullets. They want to give him a chance to surrender. LAPD officers did what was necessary. Taking him out of the car. To save a suicidal man from himself. Code four, the suspect is in custody. In Vallejo, California, Sergeant Gene Strecker of the Highway Patrol makes a traffic stop. Hey, do you have a uh, registration for your car there? The answer is no, a red flag to any officer. But this woman is determined to make things worse. I'll give it to you. You signed your mom's last name. Sergeant Strecker has heard this kind of stuff before. May I have my license? Hold on. He calls for backup and has the driver get out of the car. Birthday wrong. They got your name wrong and your birthday wrong. It turns out the woman doesn't even know her own date of birth or address. You had me nervous, so I signed my mom's last name. Okay. She offers reasons for every mistake. Because uh, on my birth certificate, it's really wrinkled, and on the date, you really can't tell. Mm -hmm. I just told you, I use that address for my ID, my job. Contract. She even has an excuse for why the signatures don't match. Well, I take my nails off and the signature no, I don't want will you be exactly nails off. But if she's going to lie, she'll have to be more creative because Strecker isn't buying a word of it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I've been nervous before and I never signed my mom's name to anything or my dad's. I've been using one name for 17 years and in one night you change your name. That doesn't make sense to me. Tired of hearing lies, Strecker lets the woman know the bottom line. If that's your license, that's fine, OK? If it's not your license, you need to tell me right now, OK? Then I'm going to take you to jail. If you're dishonest with me from this point on, OK? Still, the woman insists she's being honest. No reason to lie. The sergeant is done giving her second chances. He gets out the handcuffs, and the woman finally cracks. I'll tell you my name. No. My Give me real name. And when Strecker tries to take the woman in for giving false information, don't do this. She turns into a struggling suspect. Turn around. In a blind rage, she gives the officers all they can handle and more. Please cooperate. It's enough. It's enough. Even bystanders tell her to stop making matters worse. Unfortunately, she doesn't listen. And the officers literally have to carry her off to jail. Lying to a cop. Because on my birth certificate is really wrinkled. Can turn a minor traffic citation into a major offense. I'm going to take you to jail. But some people can always make a bad situation worse. 
This woman was guilty of nothing more serious than driving without a license. Driver's license? ID. But when she decided to lie. I just told you, I used that address for my ID. My and then fight. <laughs> Turn around. She landed herself behind bars. <laughs> Next, on world's wildest police video. When a slam happy car thief takes a run at the police. It's a gut wrenching feeling. Officers find themselves <laughs> in a fight for their lives. Once a chase starts, your greatest asset is your partner. It's all clear, it's clear. clear. And when it all goes wrong, that partner can be the difference between whether you make it home that night or not. Salt Lake City, Utah. Two deputies spot a car that's been reported stolen. Chase, if he goes 1080, I'll call you Chase, huh? As they pull up behind, the deputies have every reason to expect this thief is going to run. So it's no surprise when he does. Alpha 35, 1080. The pursuing deputies are partners, Stacy Rollins and Brady Cottom. They've been in chases together before, but none like this. I perceived he was going to do anything he could to get away. It's a gut-wrenching feeling. I mean, you know that uh, one way or other, um, you're dealing with some bad folks, probably. These are 80 miles per hour. The suspect tries to turn left, but he's going way too fast. Now the northbound. Well, section eastbound. Moments later, the suspect tries another hard left. This time he makes it, but he spins out. The suspect whips around and darts through oncoming traffic. Deputy Rawlings becomes the primary unit. The driver careens into a quiet neighborhood. Again, he loses control. We're now southbound 1500. From the second unit, we see the suspect take the corner too fast. He hits a parked car, throws it in reverse, and then floors it in drive, ramming Rawlings' cruiser. I pulled in front trying to block him, stopped my vehicle. Brady was behind, and uh, then he rammed me intentionally. The suspect backs up and hits another car. Deputy Cottom leaps out of his cruiser, weapon drawn. Both officers are now vulnerable. There was never a doubt in my mind that given the chance to escape, he would have done anything he had to, including run one of us or an innocent citizen over to escape. Uh, as you can see in the video, I was right next to the car, and it actually drug me back a little bit, and I lost my balance. Seeing his partner in mortal danger, Deputy Rawlings fires. He was trying to get it back into drive, and that's, that's when I, I had to fire. I fired two shots, hitting the suspect, and that, that ended the, the chase. I felt that day that I was probably going to die. I thought the guy was getting ready to shift the gear and to run me over. And I felt that because Stacy did shoot him, that he saved my life. It's something your kids, your wife, um, will never forget, or Brady's, or his family, or his kids. This particular incident, it, it has been the hardest thing that I've ever dealt with in my career, or probably ever will, and hopefully it, it won't happen again. For a cop on the street, let me go. It never gets any easier. Back up now. Refusing to stop. No matter how many robberies, riots, fights, or felony pursuits he's seen, there's only one thing he can count on. It's going to be wilder, possibly suicidal, faster, and scarier next time.